Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is uh, Wednesday. Wow, Wednesday already, and it is time for our daily devotion. I want to invite you to come and join me as we take a moment to pause and center ourselves on God's presence in our lives today. I'm looking forward to spending a few moments in devotion with you. Although I need to find my devotional to be able to do that. As you find us on Facebook, if you would please leave a quick comment and say hello, I would appreciate you doing that. If you watch us later on today, don't forget, leave a comment and say hello. As you appear on Facebook, I will say good morning to you. Got to flip a couple pages in my Bible to get to the right spot of where I'm supposed to be reading from today. Hello, Linda. Good morning to you. Hello, Susan. I'm glad that you are here with Linda today watching our devotion time. We miss seeing you each day. Good morning, Barbara and Chris. Glad to see you. Hello, Stacy. Good morning to you. William, my Uncle Bill. I'm uh, hoping you made it home safely to, uh, to Texas. Good to see you. Hello, Miss Rosie. Glad to have you with your grandma. So today we're going to be reading from Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 6. The prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 6. Just watching to see if anybody else says good morning. Well, Chris. Chris must be watching from a different room than, than Barb Mueller is. <laughs> You're both here, though. That's great to see the two of you. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 6. Yes, he is. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. Good morning to you. Good to see you. Glad you're here. That's Barbara Paddock. One of Linda's sorority sisters on here. Also happens to be uh, mother-in-law to uh, one of my colleagues, Bill Kanegi. Again, Isaiah 61, 1 through 6 is where we're reading today. Here is our opening prayer. Friends, O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. All right. Isaiah 61, 1 to 6. The good news of deliverance. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. 
You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you shall glory. Our devotion writer today is Valerie Rowland. Valerie is, or excuse me, Valerie Ronald. Valerie is from Manitoba, Canada. Here is her focus, ver focus verse. Yeah, focus verse. It is verse three. The Lord has sent me sent to the Lord has sent me to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to be, to, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Uh, that reads a little bit differently because it's the NIV, not the NRSV, which I re read. Okay, so here is Valerie's devotion. She says, Following a fierce summer storm, my husband and I went outside to see an uprooted tree stretched across our yard. As we cleaned up the broken branches littering our lawn, I mourned the loss of the tree. On summer days, we had rested under its shade, listening to the rustle of leaves and the breeze and the singing of birds in its branches. Now all that remained, remained, now all that remained was an ugly stump. However, my husband took a more pragmatic view. Realizing the tree's absence allowed more sunlight to reach his vegetable garden. The plants would flourish with more sunlight to strengthen them. Losing a tree cannot compare to losing someone or something precious, but it provides a picture of how God can turn loss into abundance. Amid the pain of significant losses in my life, God filled up the emptiness with an abundance of love. God gave me beauty and joy in spite of my loss and my mourning. And praising God lightened the heaviness. Where a tree once stood, now light floods our garden. Likewise, our scars of loss do not need to remain places of pain and darkness. Rather, they can be markers of where God met us and brought new light to our lives. I remember uh, several years ago, wow, this has been a long time. I was at an annual conference with a couple of friends of mine, and on Sunday morning, instead of uh, instead of going to worship at uh, the annual conference meeting, uh, we left Springfield and drove down 44 to Joplin and went to church with one of our colleagues who was leading worship at his church that morning. This was just after the tornado had gone through Joplin um, earlier, uh, a few weeks earlier in that May. And we went and we, we took a moment to drive around town a little bit <clears throat> saw the the devastation of of what transpired when the hurricane when that tornado just ripped through the town. One of the pastors that was there at the time was Aaron Brown, who's now at Woods Chapel, and Aaron talked about darkness and death not having the final word, not being the ultimate in our lives, but rather light and life will be the ultimate victors in the world today. And I think in the middle of these kinds of things, it's awful hard for us sometimes to see that light and that life. We see a lot of the darkness and the pain. But God, in God's grace and mercy, and God in the people that come around us, remind us that we truly are never alone in these kinds of things. It may seem dark, but there's light always around us. It may seem like that we find ourselves in, under a heavy weight or a, a troublesome burden, and yet there's always people around us to help us and to lead us, to actively work beside us and be a part of whatever we're going through. And what we fin finally discover is as though, even though we can, can find ourselves feeling empty, we come to understand that God's love can actually fill us that even though we might find ourselves in moments of despair, God's love can overcome that. We just have to figure out how to weed through the darkness, how to find it enough, uh, how, to, how to find our way enough that we can see the light that's coming for us and the goodness that's headed our way, the love of God that wants to flood our hearts and our lives. It takes us, I think, in some ways looking up and looking up maybe in the moment of prayer. I, I 
think I remember my grandmother, my, my great grandmother actually having a portrait of, um, uh, the picture of Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane at the rock praying. And Jesus is, is down on one knee leaning against the rock and his head is looking up towards the heavens. And I think sometimes in our deep moments of despair, that's what we need to do is find a posture of prayer. And we need to be a people who cast our eyes towards the one who loves us the most. And in that, I think we'll find that God's spirit will fill us and that God's love will be present and made known in that moment. And we'll be able to sense that something better is ahead of us than what's behind. So let's take a moment to pause and pray. So dear Lord, thank you for comforting us when we are brokenhearted. When we mourn, you offer beauty, joy, and praise to fill us up. When we feel empty, may your love fill that space. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here today. By the way, good morning, Jan. Great to see you, Mrs. Center. Good morning to see you as well. Uh, great to see you. So glad to have all of you here today. Don't forget, come and join us tomorrow for our devotion time. Uh, again, if you are someone who watches this later on, don't forget, leave a quick comment, say hello. Once we're finished, feel free to share this on your own Facebook page if you would like to. As you take a moment to pause and pray today, if you haven't already, take a moment to pause and pray for one another, especially Susan. And don't forget our friend Gail Ween. She's having surgery tomorrow, so be in prayer for her. Um, and take a moment not only to pray for one another and these folks, I would invite you to take a moment to pray for me. I am praying for you, friends. Uh, that's something I think is a good discipline for us as a community to, is to be in prayer for each other. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. I am praying that God's rich grace and peace might be upon you, and I'll look forward to being back with you. Don't forget, devotion time tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, friends, for being here today. Peace and grace be upon you.